We've had some big names on, uh, uh, and we've you know, and we promo them here. Newt Gingrich is going to be with us, and Dan Rather is going to be with us. I don't think that we've ever had the amount of turmoil uh, involved uh, for getting this guy here. And from the day I walked into town in 1990, and they do this when you come into a new market, they tell you who's been here before. Well, you know, Jay Thomas used to work in there, Charlotte. <laughs> you know, uh, Jack Gale used to own the airwaves of uh, Charlotte. Uh, and they tell you that because they know you won't be around long enough to fall into the same... Uh, but uh, Murphy in the Morning is just an absolute legend in this town and then went on to become an absolute legend in Chicago. And uh, do you feel a little weird being at uh, WBT? Weird is not the word for it because I know during the heyday of big waves and all that, how to even come near the studio to throw rocks at me. However, it is just like a picture. <laughs> Gold Old and decrepit. <laughs> 10,000 foot titanium tower. Yeah. Bonds bust of Arthur Godfrey sitting over in the corner. Glad to be here, John. Hey, Glad it is. Uh, it's a kick to meet you. I, 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 I'm a radio junkie first and foremost. And so when I get a chance to meet people like you, and we had uh, uh, Shotgun Tom Kelly in here the other night, when I get a chance to meet names I've been reading about in the trades for 35 years, uh, that's just a big, uh, big charge out of me. We'll take some phone calls later on, but uh, I don't know that I've ever, and you and I talked about this on the phone, but, uh, and we found the same thing with Jack Gale. These people remember you. You know, there's, I've been in the business long enough that you know after six months after you've been fired, you know, they, they don't remember who you are anymore, but God, they remember you. Radio had such a profound influence back uh, during the time of uh, Jack Gale and also Jay Thomas and uh, when we did the Murphy in the Morning Show here. And after that fragmentation started having a little more down, where not everybody was tuned into the same place again. You couldn't get one person to dominate again. But yeah, you're right. I, I, I have found uh, coming back to Charlotte, and I haven't been here. Uh, I just came to visit maybe five years ago. And before that, it was a while since I'd been in Charlotte. And, uh, but yeah, people do remember you. Makes makes me happy. Now I call when we we said we said we can't do the uh, the uh, show about the Murphy in the Morning show without having Larry Sprinkle here with us. So, uh, thank you. And, and uh, Larry, you've chosen to stay in town for a long, long time. But uh, I mean, I was I listen, I spent an hour and a half listening to the tape of you guys today. And uh, God, I had no idea you had talent. <laughs> Thank you. There, there, there are a lot of things about Larry you don't know. And some you will never, you will never you, know tonight. I, I mean, a hundred people have asked me about the past the loot thing, and I knew yeah. about that and stuff. Uh, and uh, Stump the Murph, I've had emails about that. And uh, but I, I mean, I listened to you. How much of your stuff? This is where I was kind of curious. How much of your stuff was scripted back then? And if so, who wrote most of it? Did you, Murph? Do you write most well, of here's, it? Larry and I had a deal. Um, I did not do character voices, and he didn't write scripts. <laughs> no and kidding. And if you ever heard our attempts at either one of those, you know why. But yeah, I wrote. I wrote. Uh, you uh, wrote, and he performed. Yes, every script. Uh, we, and the only things that we scripted were the bits such as Mr. Codgers sure. pass the loop club. Brother Bill Taker, so happy to be here. And uh, Elvis, of course. Oh, thank you. It's good, it's good to have you back again. <laughs> the Big E. So those were actually, and uh, where Larry dug these up, I don't know, but there's some, some, these some typed and some I mean, handwritten you, scripts. But I mean, just, I mean, it's all, it, it's so topical uh, oh, of, of the, the era. The Great Dildoni. We yeah. did that? We actually did that and I got away like with that. it. That was, <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there's a, that, but the spirits are you about guys to were, speak. For that day, you guys were stomping on the line. <laughs> I was more advanced than I thought I was back then. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want to I mention one thing. Murphy's been gone. He left here in 1982. And uh, I've been at, at uh, WCNC-TV for almost 23 years. And I told Murphy this on the phone every time I talked to him. There's not a month, there's not a month or sometime a week that goes by that someone does not mention to me when I meet them or on an email, do you have Mur the best of Murphy in the morning? Where is Murphy? Is he coming back? And, and, and I ha last week, two emails, had nothing to, this, was, this was before the announcement about him being on the show. So that's the impact that, that, that he has made in this community, and it's, it's still going on. It's, listen, we, I mean, th this station uh, just celebrated, what, 86, 87 years or something like that. But every time we do one of our five-year anniversaries, uh, you know, we get Ty Boyd back in, or we get uh, A.J. Thompson, or we bring these guys back in here. But they, they always your name always comes up. And people always say, so what's Murph doing these days? Well, we knew you went back, we, we knew you did your 10, 11, whatever it was, years in Chicago. Yeah. And then you kind of floated. Did you not go to Florida after that? I did, but to be honest, in all, I was in, I, I considered I was in Chicago for over 20 years. Um, I took three off to go down to Florida to Palm Beach. 
And, uh, yeah, I was talking to some radio friends of mine last night. What a whiner I was. I have to move to Palm Beach. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> you don't hear. But I did, uh, awaiting for another opening to come up in, uh, in Chicago. But I got to Palm Beach, and I worked there for three years. I got so homesick. For Chicago. Uh, for Chicago that I but, ended up going back But you're, there originally, you're Birmingham, Alabama. Birmingham, born, Alabama right? is my hometown. So how long did it take you to get comfortable in Chicago? And Chicago was a, a little adjustment, but I tell you, I really threw myself into it. Um, I had actually planned to move to Chicago since I was uh, seven. My dad took me up there. The family went up for a trip to Chicago. And uh, I looked around. They had these big yellow cars. You could wave your hand. They'd stop and give you a ride. And I'd never seen anything like that, but I was seven. And, uh, I, but I, I looked around and I went, yeah, I'll, I'll come back here. Most people know that Big Ways was owned by Stan and Sis Kaplan, and they did tr had treated me so extremely well. Extremely well. <laughs> no, it did. It, we it, paid it, him more than anyone ever. <laughs> I, I gave it. You know, seriously, Stan basically said to Murphy, what do you want to stay? He, uh, he offered, you want, you want the station? You want my you want my uh, my limo? My, my, my Rolls Royce. I uh, yeah yeah he he was he was generous to me and every time I, I really really wanted to move to Chicago though I, I loved working there and I say I'd go in and I would say Stan um, I really um, need to move to Chicago and he would reply you don't need to move to Chicago you need a new Jaguar. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you got it. <laughs> and, uh, through wow, the you know, miracle of radio trade outs <laughs> three days later I was driving one and next year I tried again and uh, I didn't need to go to Chicago I needed a boat. I had had this this script ready uh, for the past the Loop Club and at, at that time they were right on Park Avenue this was before they even moved down to South Carolina they were just a local entity and just raking in uh, a gazillion dollars every day and um, I, I'm sure there's some people that thought I had it in for them. I didn't. It was just a local organization. I did think what they were doing was kind of crummy. Yeah. Uh, and if I had ever caught my grandmother giving one red cent to Jim Baker, I'd have pimp slapped her and then hit him. <laughs> uh, but I, I, uh, we, we put it on, and uh, this is, a, I think, a good inside story. Jim Baker was on the phone to Stan Kaplan, the owner of Big Ways, within about 10 minutes. Well, that's when you, that's how you know you've got a hit. Yeah, I think I had it. And, and of course, now, I couldn't hear the other part of the conversation. I can only hear Stan's side. And Larry will remember because you can hear Stan all over the building. In fact, he walked around with a phone so you could just hear him. But Jim Baker is screaming about how we're destroying his organization and everything else. And Stan is just laughing in his face. And then finally, he makes, he makes the proposition. And this, this was almost angering. He, he accused Stan because Stan is Jewish of being anti-Christian, and that's why, why it was on the air. And here's what I heard Stan say. Anti-Christian? Me? Don't look at me. I didn't write the script. Talk to Murphy. He wrote the script. And then he said, and he's a GD Baptist. <laughs> How long have we been there? Maybe five years. Um, yeah. Stan and Sis opened up their pocketbooks and built a state-of-the-art building out on Radio Row. Multi 16 track recording studio. I mean it really was the gorgeous. Time, and yeah. the, the after uh, they left the new owners, I assume that's who's to blame. I think so. Let it run down and yeah. had to be bulldozed. Murphy yeah. in the morning and Larry Sprinkle and uh, Rick Patterson from uh, that was radio.com is in here and Dave Nicholson who helped put us all this together is in here and Cheryl's in here and uh, I'm in here. I'm in here, in here Winter, you're here, here, baby. Winter still in here. Don't forget about me. Man. Gang's all here. We'll be back in a second. Thank you. <laughs>